Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can set up M Rhythmizer using automation with either MIDI notes or using MIDI CCs. Both have their advantages and disadvantages, and I'll show you how to do both. I think I went over MIDI notes briefly in another one, another previous video, but I'll show you how to do it again quickly, and then I'll show you how to do it through uh, MIDI CC automation, which I don't think I did, and I'll show you how I actually used it in a project. So let's get started. What I have is I just have one instance of M Drummer, and it's just going to play some hi-hat notes for us like this. So if I play it, nothing elaborate. It's just there so you can hear what's happening. Let's add an instance of M Rhythmizer. This could also be done with M Rhythmizer MB. I'm just using M Rhythmizer here just for convenience sake. Now we have this. I'm just going to use the general so we have some you know different patterns in here. And now let's play this again. You probably hear something weirds going on. If we look at the volume automation here, you see it's stuck here at gate eight. So it's playing, you know, like a trance gate. When I click on it, it won't go back and you're wondering why. What's happening is M Drummer is sending this hi-hat signal out as MIDI directly into M Rhythmizer, which means it's going to trigger these by accident. And of course we don't want that. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to, first of all, stop that. And then I'll show you how to use another track to trigger uh, this using MIDI notes from a different track, which you might wanna do. All we have to do is make M Rhythmizer stop responding to MIDI on the, I guess, channel one bus. So we're just gonna go in here in Reaper. You'll have to check your own DAW to see exactly how to do this in yours, but in Reaper, it's fairly easy. We'll go to IO and MIDI input, we're gonna set the MIDI input to bus two instead of bus one. So now M Drummer is sending things out on bus one, we're gonna set it to bus two. Let's listen to it again, see if it changes. Now, as you can hear, M Rhythmizer isn't being effective, affected. What we're gonna do next is just insert something here, just another track. I'm gonna set this up to use my MIDI keyboard. So we're gonna use uh, the QX25, that's my keyboard. I'll turn it on here. And then we're just going to send the MIDI from here into M Rhythmizer like this. Now it says when you send it, it has lots of different things in here. There's no audio coming out of here, it's just MIDI. But I'm not gonna send it on every single channel. I'm gonna send all the MIDI to bus two like this. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want it triggering M Drummer. I just want it triggering M Rhythmizer, which is on track two. So now if I have my keyboard and I start playing it, you see as I'm playing it, it's shifting between these patterns. So I'll play this loop and then I'll go and move between different patterns. Let me use the time actually. I have to move down on my keyboard, shift it down in octaves. Okay. So play it and I'll just play through this and you can hear what's happening. So you get the idea. You can do that using your keyboard. That's fairly easy. If you want to record it, all you have to do is go in here, I'll insert a new MIDI item, and we'll do the same thing. We'll just record it, play it again, hit record. Oh, not there, not at the end of the track. Make sure you go to the beginning. Like that, that's all we need. I can cut off the end here, I don't really need that. Ah, deleted everything on accident. Anyways, this is an easy way to do things. And if you're like me, you're like, ah, I'm not getting these on completely on beat, I wanna change them. All you have to do is go into the MIDI notes and you can quantize these. Or if you have it like snap to, I can be like, ah, see, I'm hitting this a little bit before the beat. 
So I just snap that there, move this backwards or forwards, etc. And you can edit the MIDI that way. It's very easy. That way you know exactly when things are starting and stopping. What I oftentimes like to do is do like a dry run like that where I'm playing things. And then if it's like, it's perfect, but I'm starting this one a little bit too early, I can just go into the MIDI and change it. Or if I think, you know what, I wanted to, that to last a little bit longer, I can extend it. Or if it's like, you know what, when I played that, I was kind of improvising and it didn't sound good. I can just erase it or change it. So I think this is an easy way, but I'll show you one other way. So if I delete this whole track, boom, don't like that. Let's say for some reason you don't want to add another MIDI track. It's confusing. You're cluttering up your project, etc. Another way you can do this is by using MIDI CCs. So all we have to do is, however, whichever way in your DAW, go in here, and now it's on MIDI read. What we're gonna do is click to write, and as we play through this, we can just click on these and it'll write a new MIDI track. So let's go. There we go. And now you see here, there's MIDI. These are the MIDI CCs. If you like this, just leave it. But sometimes you're like thinking, ah, this is no good because as we play it, this started really early. Ah, sorry, let me go back. When you do this, make sure you actually change it from right back to read like this. So if I don't like that, maybe I want it to start earlier, I can just move this over like this. I think, ah, I wanted to stop there, do the same thing. Just drag this over, drag this over. Now I could write this manually, but it's a little bit hard because there's such little space and there's so many different patterns in here. I don't think I'd want to do that, but by clicking it, you can do it this way. Also, if you wanted to stop and end at certain points, now I have the triggering as immediate, but you actually don't need to do that. You can have it immediate single shot, which is going to start it at a certain point, but when it gets to the end of the bar, it's going to shut off automatically. So let's say I go into here and erase all these points. We'll do it one more time. Since I have it on end automatically, once it hits the end of the bar, it's just gonna turn off. So play it one more time. You see, I didn't go in and turn this off. It turned off by itself after the end of the bar. So if that's what you want, and most of the time it is, you can set it like that. If you don't want that, I can set it to next bar. And that means it's not going to start whenever I click it. When it starts at the beginning of the bar, no matter when I click it, that's when it'll start like this. So as you can see, I'm hitting these early, but they don't actually play until it gets to the next bar. So you can use that however you want. And sometimes that's easier depending on how you play or like, ah, I can't get the perfect rhythm or something. And you always want to start or end at the next bar. You can use these triggering modes like that. And same thing with the next bar single shot. It'll start at the next bar and then it'll end in one bar. So use whichever one is the easiest for you. But let me just show you one track that I actually use this in a song that hopefully I'll be able to put out soon. There we go. Okay, so here's the song, and I'll let you hear parts of it, but I use this quite a bit in the song. So I'll let you just hear the hi-hat here, and I'll play it. And let me move this out. You can see what I'm doing here, and you can see how it's being changed.
So basically, I'm just trying to do some kind of like glitch effects, some backwards thing, some speeding up. I was really inspired by like Square Pusher. I really like Square Pusher. And I wanted to do something like that in my song. So this was an easy way to do it. I can just put it on the hi hat and ride symbol. Uh, another one I used this on is I used it on the pad. So the pad for the song, I use the exact same thing. I use this type of automation. I'll play this for you. And you notice here, it gives it like some rhythmic sequences. So instead of using the time, I'm using the volume automation for this inside M Rhythmizer. Uh, right here. Let you see it. Now this pad and even the hi-hat, they're kind of like background parts. They aren't the main part of the song, but I wanted something to be kind of like ear candy because, you know, if you have like the same hi-hat going the whole time or the pad is not doing anything, it can be a little bit boring. So for the people that may be listening on headphones or maybe you listen to this two or three times, like a third time, you're like, hey, that's kind of interesting in the background. You didn't notice that. I just wanted something like that in the song, and M Rhythmizer allowed me to do that fairly quickly and easy, spice things up, and it didn't take me too long to do. So, hopefully that gives you an idea of some ways you can use M Rhythmizer. I know sometimes it's a little bit difficult to understand when you first set it up, but if you just follow what I showed before, it should be easy and painless. So, if you have any questions, leave those down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that. And check out all the other plugins at MelderProduction.com. Until next time, see you.